Hi, everybody. Welcome to Kensington Cooks Live with Chef Marissa. This is Connor. I'm from Kensington Park Senior Living, and we're glad to have you here today. Some of you might be new. Some of you have joined us in the past, um, but we're very excited to have you. Um, tomorrow's St. Patrick's Day. We have a great spring menu for you planned today. We've got a salted caramel martini, an heirloom tomato salad, and a raspberry lemon ricotta cake. So it's going to be really delicious. And our chef Marissa has put a lot of work and time into this session. So we hope you enjoy. And as always, we'll send you the recipes right afterwards. And if you have any questions for chef Marissa during the presentation, feel free to write it in the chat box and I will relay that information. Enjoy and uh, let me know if you need anything. I'm gonna pass it over to Marissa. Oh, you're still on mute. Hold on one second. There you go. Perfect. Great. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Kensington Cooks. We're so excited to have you here. Today, I have a very special guest, uh, Sumner Levin, who is a resident in our independent living uh, community. So thank you, Sumner, for being thank here. You. Oh, <laughs> so today, we're going to start off with a salted caramel martini. So tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day, as uh, Connor has stated. And uh, just in lieu of that, we're going to do a Bailey's Irish uh, martini with a little fun. So Sumner's going to help me do that today. He's going to work on decorating our martini glasses. So he's dipping them in water, and then he's rimming it with salt. Might have to just roll it. Not enough salt. Okay. Yeah, the, so he, he made a statement saying, I thought we are making, are we making margaritas or martinis? So I told him it's just a play on, because we want to get the saltiness for the caramel. If you've ever had a chocolate with caramel and salt, it, it just brings out that sweet and salty flavor and it tastes really good. So he's just decorating the glasses for me. Um, I'm going to add, I have some Bailey's Irish cream. Perfect. That's, that's pro-like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have to get my bar finished. <laughs> and I think in the recipe that I have for you, I have a vanilla vodka. I happen to have caramel vodka, which either one is preferable, so it doesn't really matter. I did, I did forget the ice, so we're going to pretend there's ice in here. So I'm just going to take my jigger. It's about one and a half ounces of vodka. We'll just do one. We're still at work. And uh, it's two ounces of the Bailey's Irish cream. So you're just going to mix that with your ice. We'll pretend there's ice in here. Chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it. Right? And then we don't even really need to strain it because we have no ice. Uh, and this is more of a dessert. I mean, I'm not going to fill it up. It's very, it's strong. It's very sweet. Very now. sweet. Now. now. <laughs> and I'm going to just make myself one because why not? Mm, that is good. Good? Yeah, it is good. What's wrong with you? Mind if I drink it all? No, you no. can take it. <laughs> not. Enjoy. Ooh, that is good. It's hard without the ice. <laughs> okay. And then, and the salt, I don't know, does it have, did you taste the salt? Yes. The salt with it? Cheers. Cheers to you. <laughs> Marissa, what kind of salt do you use for that? I just use kosher salt. Kosher, okay. I wouldn't, kosher, really? it's just kosher salt, yeah. I really wouldn't recommend regular granulated salt. Kosher salt, like martinis, you use that bigger salt. Just tastes better. You can take it with you or you can finish it. Whatever you want to do. I think I'll finish it. But it's delicious. <laughs> it, it really tastes like dessert. So oh, it's, good. it's delicious. Thank you. Sumner, thank you. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Enjoy. I'll and enjoy, be careful. I'll enjoy it standing up, I hope. <laughs> 
Thank you. Okay, so I'm just gonna get ready for our next course, which is our heirloom tomato salad. Thank you. Just clear this out the way. And now it's just me. So I did take my mask off so you can see me and hear me a little bit better. Um, we're gonna do an heirloom tomato salad. If you can see my tomatoes, they're beautiful. So I went to the grocery store last week and they had these beautiful heirloom tomatoes. And I went back yesterday and they didn't have any. So I was a little disappointed, but I found these beautiful tomatoes that are still, they, they look like they could be heirloom tomatoes that are just baby. They're technically not, but if I didn't tell you, you wouldn't know, but they're still beautiful. So heirloom tomatoes, uh, what makes them heirloom tomatoes is the seeds. They're pressed down from the farmers from season to season. So they're just not genetically modified. Um, and that's just what makes them so unique. And I find them pretty charming because when you go to the store, you go to a farmer's market and you, you see heirloom tomatoes, they come in all different shapes and sizes. And some of them have different features on them that I, I, saw, I saw something that say, only a grandmother can love a, a heirloom tomato because they're just uniquely different. They look different. Um, and they just have different varieties, different shapes. But, but they're known for their juiciness, their flavor. Some of them have a smoky flavor. They're just very special. So now if you go to restaurants this time of year, you, you will see a lot of heirloom tomato salads on the menu. They just aren't the typical acidic regular tomatoes. It's just bring different colors and fun and just some sweetness to, to spring. So we're gonna start off with, um, I have some red wine vinegar that I'm just gonna add to a bowl. And shallot is what I'm gonna add to it. And just let it sit in the vinegar to just get some flavor going while I start the next portion. So I'm just gonna peel my shallot. I love shallots. Depends on what I'm cooking, but I love them sometimes instead of just regular onion. They just add a different flavor. So that's all I need. And I'm just gonna kind of let them sit and marinate a little bit in this vinegar, okay? So anchovies, you either love them or you hate them or they're in, in items, recipes that you don't even know about and you eat them anyway. You eat Caesar dressing and it's made from scratch. There's usually ancho anchovies in them. And you may not even realize, but they're in there. And you probably eat them, but they add such a beautiful flavor to your dishes that you wouldn't even think about. I should have brought some gloves because I'm gonna smile. But I'm gonna take a few pieces of anchovies and I'm just gonna just chop them up. I have some oil in a pan heating up. Anchovies, once you heat them up, they melt like butter. And most people probably don't know that because who's probably cooking with anchovies on a stove? Probably nobody, right? But they add a beautiful flavor with their saltiness and brininess. And they just literally melt down. And it's gonna be a beautiful flavor with our tomatoes. I think I'm just gonna add a couple more. And while this is cooking down, I am just going to cut a few tomatoes to start preparing for my plate. Um, so heirloom tomatoes, as I mentioned, they come in all sorts of colors and textures. Some are more lumpier, um, but they're beautiful. And they taste delicious. So I'm just going to cut some down strategically put it on my plate, however. And this is one of those things, if you've, if you've been part of our cooking shows in the past, I tell you that things this year have been different as far as, you know, gatherings, but, you know, 
I, I never want you to stop doing what you've been doing this whole time just because you couldn't have guests come to your home. You should still prepare things for yourself and your families, just like you would if you have guests come over. So to this, I didn't want to add it too early because it is going to burn if I do too early. I'm just going to add a little garlic. And once the garlic cooks out, which will not take long, because you don't want it to burn, we'll be done. And I'll let this kind of just sit. Marissa, what do the anchovies look like as they're cooking? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. What do the anchovies look like as they're cooking? Oh, well right now they still look like uh, little pieces that I cut them in, but they're gonna start to kind of melt down. Um, they're literally just gonna start kind of melting away, if that makes sense. I just don't wanna burn my garlic. So this is something very simple, but it just packs a, a good flavor and a different flavor. Uh, because of the anchovies. And I'm also going to add a little bit of lemon zest for some freshness to the pan, which I'll do just at the last minute. I don't really want the lemon zest to cook out. I just want to add that extra flavor at the end. It's starting to smell good in here, especially with the lemon. And that's really it. I'm going to first add just a little bit of salt and pepper because the anchovies do have some saltiness. So just a little salt and pepper. And once again, I just didn't bring a grinder, but fresh ground pepper, uh, preferably kosher salt. And then I'm going to just top it with these beautiful shallots with the red wine vinegar, add a little acidity. And then top it with this warm anchovy and lemon oil, really, that's what it is. And you could take some fresh basil, some parsley, whatever herbs really you have and you enjoy and just finish. And there you have it. I really wish you can eat this, but it looks good, it smells good, and it's beautiful. So I hope you all can really see that. I usually have uh, somebody with me, so it's a little quiet in here today, but I really, I really wish you could smell it. It smells delicious in here. And then I have our next course right behind me, which smells incredible. So don't be scared of the anchovies, okay? Cook it for your family. Just, it looks like bacon bits. I didn't really let it cook all the way down for time purposes, but they won't even know. Oh, we have another question, Marissa. Yes. Can you use the oil, garlic, and anchovy and the lemon zest um, as a sauce maybe over pasta? Like, would you recommend using oh. it for another? Yes. That would be fabulous with uh, any kind of pasta. I mean, now gluten-free is so popular, but whether it's just any kind of really fancy pasta, um, a rigatoni, anything with this, Absolutely, because you know, you think of spring and summer, a lot of people don't want to eat heavy, heavy things, and that's fabulous. Yes, that would be amazing over pasta. Or this whole dish over pasta with the tomatoes would be great. So yes, that was a great question. Would you recommend adding any leafy greens to that salad? And if so, what kind would you add? Sure, um, really, I think it's about preference. Uh, arugula has some pepper taste to it, so if you like arugula, may go well with the sweetness of the heirlooms and the tart and sourness of the vinegar and the anchovies. So that can go very well. You could just do some baby spinach. Um, I think a lot of people, you know, and I think of our residents, 
I like this. I like that. I like this. So, you know, I think it's just all about preference, but I think something baby, even if you could do micro, they do make micro arugula, they make micro, any kind of micro greens, micro kale, um, baby kale. It's much easier to chew if that's an issue for anybody. They're just easier, you know, to chew and swallow and it's just better uh, than some bigger greens that are out there. Hope that answered the question. Okay, so next is my new, my new favorite dessert. I made it a few times to test it out and I can say everyone devoured it very quickly. So this, if you can see, is a lemon raspberry ricotta cake. And this should be your, your new staple for the spring. So make it, make it this weekend. You know, as restrictions become a little bit looser, maybe it's something that, you know, if you're meeting people outside or whatever, or you haven't seen somebody, I plan on making a few smaller ones and handing them out, but it's delicious. Uh, the ricotta cheese in here brings a whole new level to cake because it's not heavy, it's creamy, it's really moist, and it's delicious. Uh, I made this the other day without lemon. And as soon as I tasted it, I said, no, it needs lemon, it needs some acid, and it lemon just brought it to a whole nother level. So this one, once again, I wish you could smell it, I wish you could taste it, but the lemon really pops with the raspberries um, and the creaminess, and it just, it tastes really good. So. This is what we do, and it's not hard. I have a quick question, Marissa. Yes. I'm curious, when you tasted it without the lemon, how come your mind went right away to acid or, you know, I need to add lemon to this? Like, what does the acid do that really, does it really bring out the flavor? I mean, how is it different than something else? Yeah, so when you're making food in general, you should always go with sweet, sour, salty you should have all of those flavor profiles i mean obviously you think of cake might not have all of that but when you're dealing with fruit uh sometimes things pair together very well and lemon pairs really well with blueberries and raspberries and even strawberries uh, they just it just it just any really citrus pairs well with fruit um but I do like a flavor profile of specifically blueberries and lemon, but lemon with the raspberries just brought a whole nother level. And I zested it in and I added a little bit of juice from a lemon, which I didn't want to alter the texture of the cake because it didn't call for that. But I just emitted a little bit of other liquid to make it even so it didn't affect it at all, as you can see. So. Could, so, you, use, could you use oranges? You could, yes, you could. I, I personally just prefer lemon, but yes, it would still taste wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah, you could. So I have a bowl of my dry ingredients, which I've just already put in. Uh, so I have some all purpose flour, I have sugar and baking powder, and just a little bit of salt. And I'm just whisked whisk it all together just so it's combined. Um, I almost forgot. While I'm doing this, I just need to melt some butter. Elaine is wondering if you used a spring form pan. I didn't. The recipe calls for it, but I did not. I'll show you the pan I used and it worked perfectly. It didn't stick. I just used this. I think it's a nine inch, nine or eight inch cake pan. It worked perfectly. I just sprayed it. You can always parchment flour, butter. I don't, you don't need to do If you have a good nonstick pan, you could just spray it. It worked great. Um, so I'm melting some butter. So in this other bowl, I have my ricotta cheese. I have a little vanilla extract. And that's it. And to this, I'm going to add three eggs. Now you might be asking, can you use another cheese? I don't know. I don't know. You could try, but I don't really know what you would use um, besides like a creamy. So 
So could you use cream cheese? Could you use uh, uh, creme fraiche? Maybe, but I don't know if it would bake all the way. Um, but I think try and, trial and error, maybe you're not a ricotta fan. I'll tell you what, if you're not a ricotta fan for whatever reason, you can't taste the ricotta at all. The Sometimes ricotta can just be a little gritty. It's not, it's a smooth texture. This actually looks just like cheesecake batter. There's no flavor profile really of ricotta. It just makes the cake extra, extra moist. So don't not try it because you don't like ricotta because I'm telling you, you can't taste it at all. Should be easier. So once your eggs are incorporated, this is probably the most important part of the recipe. You're just going to fold, not whisk, not mix, but fold your batter probably in two parts to the dry mixture. And at first, when you're doing this, you may say, oh my God, is it working? I'm not sure. Looks weird, doesn't look like cake batter. It's going to be a very different texture because we're folding it and it's got the cheese in there. So it's just different. It, it's not gonna be, a, it's gonna be in the middle of a batter and a dough. And I'll show you when it's done what, it, what it's gonna look like. And hopefully you can see a little bit. You but said it would be in the middle of a batter and a dough. Yeah, like a cake batter is a little runny. And then okay. a dough is, you know, think of a dough, like you gotta knead it. So it's starting to look like a dough. It almost looks like a biscuit dough, but it's not gonna end up that way. It's gonna be a little bit more moldy. So just folding. And you know, baking is a science. So that's why I said, can you use a different cheese? I don't know, because I haven't tried another cheese, but you can try it and you can let me know if it works. But I would pick something that has like a subtle flavor profile. Nothing, I don't use blue cheese. What about sour cream? Yeah, you, you could probably use sour cream, but once again, ricotta is a little thicker. So, I don't know if the sour cream, you know, the cooking temperature, the cooking time, they, they alter the recipe. So it's something that if you're really interested in trying, you can play with. So we're getting there. Carrie said she likes to use ricotta in pie as well. Oh, so that looks nice. Oh, in pies? Okay, so it's getting there. I don't know if you can see or not, but. So it's like a very thick batter, if you can see it. I don't know if you can see it. But once it's all incorporated, you're gonna take your butter, half a cup of butter and add it. I'll do this in two batches as well. And once again, we're going to fold it. It doesn't matter that the butter's hot. It just needs to be melted. And after we melt it, we'll take our raspberry. And you're gonna add half your raspberries now. And once again, you're gonna fold the raspberries in because you don't wanna crush them and macerate them. Treat them tiny. And then we'll save the other half for the top of the cake. And then to this too, I just wanna add lemon zest and about half of a lemon juice. Growing up, my dad used to make this blueberry lemon tart. So good. Yeah, I think it was a graham cracker crust, almost like a cheesecake filling inside with this blueberry 
glaze on top with lemon zest. It was just fabulous. Sometimes it's the simple that pack a lot of flavor and that are just so good. Okay. So just mix everything just so it's combined. If you're not a lemon fan, you can omit it or do another citrus. And then, as I mentioned, you're just gonna spray the pan. Measured properly, it should fit perfectly. And then you're just gonna top. Just do it very organically. It doesn't have to be, unless you wanna go, I mean, it's gonna bake and get ridges and bubbles, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And the cake, it could be eaten room temperature. You can let it cool for a little bit and still eat it warm. I did taste it warm and it was delicious. And there you have it. And you'll bake it at 350 for about 50 to 60 minutes. Um, just insert, insert a toothpick, comes out clean, it's done. There you go. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Marissa before we sign off? I think we're set. So Marissa, our next session will be, it's always gonna be the third Tuesday of every month. So our next session will be April 20th. And Marissa, do you wanna give us a sneak peek of what the menu is gonna be next time? Well, I still, it's a, the menu is still a work in progress, but I do have, I do not have a fun dessert. I don't know, I've, let me just tell you, I've never been a dessert person, but I guess doing these cooking shows has kind of brought it out of me. And I've been enjoying it. So I don't I don't know if it's overloaded desserts, but why not? Um, but I know it'll be a fun dessert, more spring, summer like, and some other savory something. Probably a drink too. So it's gonna be great. And do you wanna share a little bit about I know we just switched menus to the spring and summer menu uh, yeah. for the residents. So I know you have some exciting new dishes that you'd love to share. Yeah, sure. So Sunday, we started our new spring summer menu. And uh, what kind of makes us unique is that I get to create all the menus uh, for all three of our buildings. And I kind of customize it depending on, you know, our residents needs. Uh, so that makes it fun. I do get a lot of their, you know, suggestions and requests and sometimes even some recipes of theirs. But, you know, I, I just try to make it as seasonal as possible, uh, really kind of going for what things are in season right now and we had a shrimp po' boy yesterday at lunch that the residents love we have a pesto flatbread coming up um i mean so many things a lamb kafta on a gyro um just fun fun things uh you know some of it is more ethnic some is just seasonal but the residents really enjoy it uh and it's something for them to look forward to so well, thank you so much for your time today. And again, I will send out these delicious recipes to everybody um, shortly after this. So look out for an email. And we've got a cup, we have our Kensington Connect uh, again on Thursday. And then on April 1st, we're having a drive through And part of that will be giving away little tiny cakes that Marissa has made. So she's actually gonna make this ricotta cake for you. Um, sort of a mini version and we'll be handing them out at our drive-through on April 1st. So stay tuned um, and have a great day everybody. Thank you.